Thank you everyone for attending our training today on responding to mental health challenges in the current landscape. Um, as part of Alameda County Care Connect, we, uh, me, Yadiel, who you might have talked to, uh, Jackie, as well as Jadon and Jana, um, as part of the Skills Development Unit, are very happy to provide this training, as well as many others, which you'll see at the end of the, this training. We'll, we'll have a little slide on the upcoming trainings that we have. Um, just before we get started, um, to be, for you to be aware, we are recording this training so um, for, for folks who cannot attend today. Um, right now, I would like to um, present our trainer for today, Mr. Tim Vincent, our training extraordinaire, consultant, and former social worker. Uh, Tim, would you like to get started? I would. I love the way you did that with a very emphatic Mr. Tim Vincent. <laughs> Mr. Tim Vincent, to you. So good morning, everybody. I'm Tim Vincent. And in this particular uh, capacity, I'm a consultant for the Alameda County Care Connect group as a trainer. Uh, I've done a number of the trainings that some of you may have gone through and, and helped to create them on motivational interviewing, on social determinants of health, and on cultural humility. Uh, as uh, David said, I had been a mental health clinician, a licensed therapist, a social worker, a health educator, but have done decades of work doing training uh, work for uh, healthcare providers kind of all over the United States. And um, I was asked to do this particular uh, training around responding to mental health challenges, what I'm calling in the current landscape. And I know you all know that this is an absolutely unprecedented time and we are being fraught with a number of challenges that we have never faced before. And I think it really stretches all of our emotional bandwidth to be able to either do the work and be present for the work in the communities that we wanna serve, but also to even be present in our own lives. And so I'm gonna be talking today about stress, distress, signs of stress, and some of the time that I'm going to be spending with you is going to be focused on your on you and some of the time that I'm going to be spending is focusing on you as a provider so I'm going to do both things so I just want to talk to you about that I want to make sure that you're going to do that the other thing I want to let you know and I'm going to uh, go to the next slide is we're going to use um, a couple of things um, if when I'm speaking right now unless we get into a, a larger conversation it would be great to put yourself on mute so that we don't have any background noise we're gonna have a chance to, you're gonna have a chance to speak to a couple of other people in this training. And when you do, it'd be great if you could turn on your video. If for some reason you don't have a video, you could do it in chat, but that's just better when you do that. Um, we're gonna have a couple of people who are gonna to help to facilitate some of those small groups so they know who they are and, and that's, that's part of it. So I just wanna let you know that we're gonna be doing that in this hour, because I think it's just helpful to connect with people as much as we can, because a lot of us are just doing this online and. And it's, it's just great to connect with people, I, I think. So here's the purpose of this presentation, again, is to really think about um, strengthening our recognition and response to the emotional difficulties that we are having and our clients are having in this particular period, and to uh, think about how we can best serve our diverse communities in managing some of the significant mental health and emotional challenges that we're all facing as we think about COVID-19 and also as we think about the experiences that have happened uh, that have really amplified our consciousness of structural racism that has been happening uh, for obviously for hundreds of years, but has been really been amplified in our culture lately. So we're going to talk about that. So before I get any farther, again, just letting you know that this is going to be about you and a, a bit about also about how you can be uh, more present for your community. Um, I, I, I want to start with intention. I know that you signed on, you decided to be here right now. And briefly in chat, if you could just say a couple of words, what you hope you wanna feel, what would you wanna do, what would you wanna experience uh, as um, a participant in this training? So if you can write in chat, sorry, a couple, a couple of uh, thoughts about that, that would be helpful. Just write in chat, just a couple of things. What would you hope, what would you hope to feel, do, experience, what are you hoping? I want to keep that hope alive. Let me see what people have said. To learn. Good. What else? Well, 
What other things? I hope to be able to support my patient staff and myself during these difficult times. That's, that's fantastic. Thank you. That's what I'm hoping that we're going to be talking about. Any other thoughts, hopes? To be able to support myself and others. Fantastic. Thank you, Sanjita. Well, I'm gonna, uh, we're gonna do that right now. I'm gonna talk a little bit about how we're gonna do that right now. Oh, good, to empower my clients I work with and all of our staff. So just keep thinking about what that is. I think it's important to have that intention and really know what you're wanting to get out of anything that you're doing. And this is, a, this is something that I think is important. Um, I wanna ask, I'm gonna launch a poll right now. And here it is. In the past few weeks related to current situations that you I feel more stress and anxiety, about the same amount of stress and anxiety, less stress and anxiety. But I want you to vote. I want you to think about where, we, where would you say you are right now in these past few weeks related to the current situations in your life and what's going on? Would you say you feel more or less? So, so vote if you can. We have about half the votes in. About three quarters of the votes are in, drum roll. Okay, 82% of you voted. I'm gonna end the poll and I'm gonna share the results. So you can see this, right? Can you, somebody wave your hand? You can see what I'm showing you? Yeah, I wanna make sure that you can. Okay, good. So here's what people said. I'll, you know, three quarters of you said you feel more stressed and anxiety. And I can imagine that. And the, and, the, and the rest of you said you feel about the same because it's been going on for quite a long time with, with what we've been uh, having to deal with with COVID-19 and then what's happened, I think, lately. So it's an important time to, to kind of really look at that and to think about what we can do. I want to start with this, though, because we talked about mental health challenges. And this comes from, there's something called BEAM, the uh, Black Emotional and Mental Health Collective. And it's, I think it's a, a good website for you to go to to think about ways to support community. But uh, here, the, the founder uh, is being quoted by said, but in, when we're thinking about mental health challenges, we have to acknowledge the historical causes of mental health challenges, which is the legacy of racism, sexism, homophobia, transphobia, ableism, economic stressors, and systemic failures that contribute to our mental health struggles. I think that what happens when we're in a time like this um, is that we end up having a way of really kind of making it about the individual, making it about ourselves, making it about like, why am I not able to um, move through this particular difficult time? But we have to recognize that there has been a legacy, there's been a foundation, there's been a way in which just being who we are is challenging to many of our uh, sense of mental health and, and wellness. And then I know that with the communities you're serving, this is something that is definitely in the, in the background, backdrop foundation of what makes people either feel whole and healthy or not. And so I think it's just important to start with the fact that there are structural um, situations that make it really difficult for all of us to feel um, healthy with regard to our mental and emotional well-being. And here's the current landscape. I think you know this, but I just want to kind of Stay with this for one second. You know, we are um, in a place of, uh, you, people said there's more anxiety uh, and stress or the same amount. We're in a place where we're, I think we're needing to attend to that anxiety and attend to that grief. Um, we are in a place where, you know, we're dealing with COVID-19. There's over 100,000 people who have lost their lives here in the United States and even more around the world. We're in a place where um, I would say, uh, the best way I could describe it is there's been an exacerbation and an amplification of our consciousness around structural racism that permeates all of the institutions I think that we are a, a part of, uh, not only in, in police brutality, but in other sections of our culture. Um, and I think that the two things relate to each other. I think that there's a way in which uh, COVID-19 and structural racism also relate and amplify each other. I think it, it makes it difficult again for our emotional bandwidth and our ability to really stay present when these 
huge um, issues are happening in our culture. And I know that you are wanting to, I heard this already from what you said, you want to be supportive of the communities. You want to help to build a healthier uh, situation for the people that you are speaking with. And, and I know that they and we are dealing with some of the challenges around both of these um, significant issues. And so some challenges that I, I think that you may be dealing with uh, regarding COVID-19 with uh, yourself, but also with the clients, especially when we're talking about people who have already had some limitations with regard to access are things like the ability to social distance, um, that uh, people be profiled while they're wearing face masks, that there's already stigma around like who gets it and who doesn't get it. And there's even more stigma when you talk about that. There's access to medical care and testing and the mistrust that already happens. Um, I think you already know that from the, from the, uh, disparity data that, you know, more, I would say, black and brown communities and people of color communities are dying from COVID, even if they have less uh, uh, numbers in terms of, of infections, but the, the mortality rate is higher and even the infection rates are higher. And it leads to poorer outcomes by virtue of how living situations that people live in, the, the segregated ways or the ways in which we've um, been able to um, access our, our living situations. Uh, have made it a real challenge uh, for COVID-19. And again, I think that's not only for the, the people who you're working with, but also even for us who are on this call. And I wanna start by talking about locating that stress or that distress in your life, because I believe that what can happen in situations like this is it can just feel overwhelming. It feel like, okay, there's another blob, there's another piece of stress. But I think for you, and I'm gonna focus on you all right now, I think it's important to kind of locate like, where does that stress live? Where are your stressors right now? You said that there's more stress and anxiety. Where does that, lo where is that located? I'm gonna have you speak to a couple of other people about this in a moment, but let me set this up by saying that your stress may be in a particular location or many of these locations. It may be about job. It may be about your home life and living, having to live with people and, and dealing with people every day that you didn't have to deal with. Uh, usually when you went to work. It could be about financial. It could be about, I'm going to use this one, it could be about your primary relationship and realizing that you're seeing the person that you didn't see every day, every evening, every night, all the time. Uh, and that causes stress in the primary relationship. It could be about caregiving. It could be about your future planning. It could be about your lack or your, un, un, your inaccess to social connection. It could be about your own health concerns. So looking at this list, I want you to think about it right now. I want you to think about where does your stress or where are the stressors in your life? I want you to actually note this. I want you to think as you're gonna to speak to another person about this. The other part that I wanna set up is certain things are difficult to control. It may be, I'm just gonna use this example. It may be that in my job, I can't control that because we've had to reduce hours. I'm not gonna be able, that causes stress but I'm not gonna be able to, to change that. However, in the stress that's related to my primary relationship, I might be able to change that because I may be able to think about speaking to that person and finding out a better way for us to live together knowing that we're gonna be living in such close quarters. So I want you to think about that. So here's the question I'm gonna ask you. What are some of the current stressors in your life? Where are they occurring? And then the part that I think is really important is where do you feel most confident or motivated to work in decreasing stress? So I might say, again, it may be in my health regime. I might feel like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I can do that. I can, I can help to reduce that stress. Thank you. Thank you for all of that. I'm going to move forward right now, and I'm going to talk a bit about feelings, because I think that they're, that they're coming up and we have a lot of them. And so I think that I'm just going to set some general things that I think are important for you all, but maybe important to even uh, communicate to the communities and clients you're dealing with. I think there's a way that we name feelings and then, and, and then there's, we're being a feeling. I think that there's, you know, I, I have sadness. I am I feeling overwhelmed. I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling all of these things. Sometimes the words that we use, they'll kind of take it so that we take it completely on. I am sad. I am overwhelmed. I am this thing. And so I think it's important to get out of the identity of the feeling and recognize that it's a feeling you're having. It's not something that's going to continue with you for you know, your entire being. And then I think that you know, we talked about control, but I think it's important about 
thinking about controlling feelings versus controlling behavior. I think that what happens is sometimes I don't think I can control the feeling. I don't know if I can control the sadness. I have feelings sad. I have to let it happen. Um, but I might be able to change the behavior that's related to the sadness or the related to the anger. If I'm angry, I'm angry. I have to be able to, I think in, in many ways, uh, be okay with that or know that that's really happening. But if I'm lashing out at people, if I'm distancing myself from people, if I'm doing something that's not going to be helpful for me in the long run, it's really that is what the thing that I might want to be looking at changing, not changing the feeling because the feeling is valid. I think it's important. It gives you information about what's going on with you. And it's not something I think that many of us, uh, again, I, I, I put that slide up earlier about, uh, about race and gender and sexual orientation. Many of us have been invalidated, like our feelings are invalid or have been told regularly that we're too much, our feelings are invalid, you're too angry, all of that kind of stuff. And I think that that just perpetrates, I think, our own uh, I know, mental distress. And so I think making and allowing us to recognize that the feelings are valid, they're coming from someplace. And to, I think there's also fear sometimes about having those feelings because they're so intense that I think that many times we want to squash them or feel like, okay, well, I'm not that angry, you know, but it's important, I think, to really recognize that that is really what's happening with you because I don't know about all of you, but I think the more that I squash those things, I think the, the, worse off I am in terms of how I feel about, you know, uh, communicating and dealing with the things that are in front of me. And so I also want to just say, uh, just up front, that, you know, when I'm talking about uh, some of the significant things that are happening right now, um, I think that underlying all of that is a lot of grief. And I think underlying a lot of that is a lot of anxiety. And grief and anxiety have a way of showing up in lots of different ways. It can show up through anger. It can show up through overworking. It can show up through not working very much. It can show up through sleeplessness. It can show up through changing the way I'm eating. It can be irritability. I could be using alcohol or substances differently than I was using them before. It could be sadness. And when I say emotionally labile, what I mean by that is I'm, I'm very um, emotional. I'm like crying at things that I don't usually make me cry, you know, just things that you're just, you're much more, um, the range of your emotions is, is being uh, stretched or, 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 or more histrionic or more dramatic, maybe. Um, a lack of attention, being antagonistic. I think the last one I think is really important for me. I think that sometimes we end up out of the grief and anxiety, I distance myself, which is not really helpful for me. But I think that what I do sometimes because I'm feeling so um, uh, overwhelmed maybe by all of those feelings is then maybe I'm not reaching out to people or I'm distancing myself from people that I don't feel like may be safe anymore for me. So I think that there's a number of ways in which that happens. I also just talked about feelings versus behavior. So some of these are feelings, anger and uh, sadness, but some of the other things are the behaviors that might be related to those things. My outburst, my uh, use of alcohol, my antagonistic remarks, you know, so I think it's important to kind of separate those and think about what are the things that you can, again, begin to think about where, how are they connected? And so I'm going to talk a little bit about what I'm, what, um, again, for the um, group that I, I got some of this from, what they're talking about, which is self de-escalation. How can I look at the feelings that I'm having and self de-escalate? So I'm going to talk a little bit about this and I'm going to have you think about this as you're talking about um, changing some of the stress patterns. And this is, again, from the Black Emotional uh, and Mental Health uh, group called BEAM. And it's, uh, the acronym is, is PAUSE. And so I want you to think about this. this. This is an example of anger, but it could be an example of something else that, you, that you're dealing with, your stress that you're dealing with. And so here's how it goes and with the self-de-escalation. It could be that you wanna pay attention to your body your thoughts, your feelings, what's happening to you when you're getting angry or you're overwhelmed? What are you doing? So think about that. What are you doing? I want you to think about all of these, these different things. Assess what's activating. What are the feelings that are being activated when this happens? Am I feeling misunderstood? Again, if I'm using the anger thing, am I feeling, am I upset because somebody said something? Or did something else happen that created that? Understanding the roots of the feeling. What are the values that are being challenged? that I feel this overwhelm or I feel this anger? Am I wanting to resolve that or maintain power and control over something? 
S is about setting boundaries and separating and ensuring safety. Uh, and I love this line, if you're not able to show up with dignity and respect, step away. <laughs> so I think that that's just helpful for me to hear because there's many times I have to tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use myself. There's many times when I feel like, and I'm gonna think more of a partner situation, I can't show up with dignity and respect after what, again, my partner's a man, what he said to me, I just can't do that. So stepping away and setting boundaries and working with a problem when I'm less frustrated is a helpful thing to continue to think about. The other one that I really, I appreciate this too, is E, is empathize with those involved. It's like, so again, everybody deserves respect. What could the other person be, how can they be experiencing me? Because I may not be being, being experienced the way I want to be experienced. How does my action impact others? What are other people trying to express? How can we create understanding? So again, when we're thinking of, it could be anger, it could be overwhelm, it could be sadness, to think about these things, P, Pay attention, assess, understand, set boundaries, empathize with those involved. I'm gonna have you do one other short breakout where you're gonna be talking about these particular um, ways in which you can manage some of the distress. And I want you to think about what I just said. Which one of those are easiest for you? Is setting boundaries easy? Is paying attention to your body easy? Which one's the difficult one for you to do? And then again, in thinking about working on yourself and working on your own distress, what would you like to be better at doing? You know, what would you like to be better at doing? Would you like to be better at setting boundaries? Would you like to be better at assessing sort of the root of it? Um, and so you, again, have, you should have these two things, the pause, self-de-escalation, and this uh, um, one, two, three. And Yadiel, you guys are now, you guys are um, understanding what we're doing with this small group. So if for some reason you don't have uh, audio, you can do it in chat. If for some reason you don't have video, again, just do it in chat or just, or, or maybe not do it in chat, or just let them know that you don't have video and have the conversation about how you can use this self de-escalation model to help with some of your distress a little bit later. I'm going to talk a little bit about, about uh, some of the issues that I think we all have as community uh, providers and some of the concerns that we have in dealing with this particular unprecedented time and dealing with our own issues around it. I think that sometimes our struggle to support our, our community uh, is about how closely we relate to the issues that people are having. Um, I think that sometimes that can create um, difficulty in really being present when the story that somebody is uh, letting you know is very much about something you're dealing with. I think again, uh, as we were saying in that model, I think sometimes it's difficult to set boundaries and really just say no. I don't know about some of you, but um, I feel like I'm even busier now uh, than I was. I'm, I'm surprised how much work there is to do um, at this point in time. And so sometimes it's hard to say no and set the boundaries. There's something that again, the person who, uh, is the head of being calls it martyr nurturing, which is really about um, really uh, rescuing people and feeling like you in some ways get um, something out of being in that helper role. And in some ways, I think being in that helper role can be something that could um, affirm you and, and make you feel good, but it can also be something that doesn't make us feel good at all. And, I, and again, this, it's, a, it's a larger conversation, but I think that uh, regarding gender, and I, I'm thinking of women of color, but I think that for other people, this is true. I think that there's a way in which people are um, valued for that. <laughs> like, you know, like you're, you're, you're giving till it hurts. That's the way you're supposed to be. You, you give so much to your family. That's how you are. That's how you show your, your, um, your worth in some ways. And I don't think that that uh, really affirms people's value. I think in some ways it, it, it makes it difficult for them, I think, um, to be whole and to be healthy. I think there's something about us saying that we aren't doing enough. I think that there's a feeling because there's so much to do that we aren't doing um, everything we can do. And I just wanna to say to all of you is you are doing enough, that every phone call you make, the hours you take, even sitting here with this group of people thinking about yourself, you're doing something that will, I think, involve and help the community because you'll be more uh, available to do that not prioritizing self-care. I know that there's been some modules on that, but that's something that I think we do as community providers. And then really being uh, relying on being a helper as a way to cope. I think I was just saying that, but I, I think that you can relate to some of that. Um, 
I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to launch the poll because I want to make sure that I'm talking about this. You know, one of the other things that I know that you're doing is you're working with people from a lot of different cultures. And when you're thinking about um, things like who is the, uh, how do people get counseled? I think that one of the things that is difficult sometimes is some of the systems that we set up don't feel like they are um, in keeping with how people uh, really want to access their uh, support of, for counsel. So there may be people who are not psychologists or, or therapists or social workers that people feel like they can really go to to actually get that support and that counsel. I think it's important to ask people who those trusted sources are. I think it's important to think about the coping skills that people have and recognize that, you know, again, that my coping skills may be very different than someone else's and what really kind of works for somebody is very different than what works for me. I think how people express themselves and sometimes we say, you know, talk about your feelings or say your, your feelings, but the way that you might say them or the way that I might say them are very different. And what is actually acceptable and socially acceptable for people is something that you want to be talking about. And how are, what are the socially acceptable ways that people get their needs met? Again, I might be talking from a male perspective or cisgender perspective that may not be the same as the, the people that I'm being working with. So I think it's really important to really kind of get from people where their um, strengths lie around coping, around emotional expression, around the socially acceptable ways in which they can get their needs met. At a time like this, I think it's, it's just really uh, an important thing to do. Um, I wanna also just talk about sort of a, my, some takeaways about responding to mental health challenges that I think you could say to yourself or you could say to other people, I think it's okay right now not to be okay. I just have to tell you, it's okay. It's really okay. This is, this is not something that we should just move, change or, or, or you know, suddenly not ex expect people to not be okay. Your feelings are always valid. Modifying behavior takes commitment, it takes practice, and it takes support. Expressing your feelings and intent safely is an important thing for people to do. You want to give permission to set boundaries, to honor your body and your spirit. And I said this again, and I'm gonna, I've said it before, but I said it again, you are doing enough. I want to tell you that again. <laughs> you are doing enough. You're doing enough. So I'm going to launch a, a, a poll just briefly, and we're going we're gonna to end in about another five minutes or so, but I want to launch this next poll for you. Which response do you think would be most helpful for your clients to hear that I just talked about? that it's okay not to be okay, that your feelings are always valid, that changing behavior is a commitment that needs support, that expressing your feelings is in, important to do in a safe way, to set boundaries, to honor your spirit and your body, or that you're doing enough. I want you to, I want you to vote. What would you think would be a good message or a message that you really feel like would be helpful for your clients, your community, for you to here. I think it's an underlying message maybe that really helps to build the foundation on how you respond to people. So vote, please. Okay, I'm going to share the results. So it's interesting because it seems like the first two were the ones that people felt the most um, drawn towards that, you know, it's okay not to be okay, you know, and that your feelings are valid. They're always valid, you know, that, that people don't need to take them away from you. So I think it, 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 things like that, I think can go a long way. I really do can go a long way to help. I, I think that we're not going to be able to take away some of the significant challenges that people are facing, but really letting people know that it's okay to, to be, uh, struggling at this moment and that their feelings that they're having whether or not they are sadness or depression or anxiety are really valid and that there's reasons for them and to again maybe even using that de-escalation model as a way to kind of examine those can be a helpful thing i'm gonna um also you did that i i love this too so i just want to tell you i found i found these prompts and this is also from beam so they have a lot of really good uh things to use so i want to i want to i want to kind of move towards the close of this by doing something about you all and what you're willing to um commit to and i'm going to have you do this 
in chat. I'm gonna let me let me leave this and I'll tell you what I want you to do. So hearing everything that we just talked about, thinking about, you know, maybe making some changes to the stress that you're you're feeling in a particular area, thinking about a, a overwhelming feeling like anger or um, sadness and and using a a, a pause um, framework to think about it. Um, I want to think about like how you affirm yourself and take space that you need to take to take care of yourself. And so I'm going to ask you to, to um, not for all of these, but I'm going to ask you for some of these to write in chat the answer to this. So here, I'm going to talk to you about this. And you can write this down. I think it'd be helpful. Today, I give myself permission to feel my blank. I want somebody to, I want you to write that in chat. I want somebody to write the answers to that in chat. Today I give myself permission to feel my Today I give myself permission to feel my sadness, to feel my emotions. Thank you. Today I give myself permission to feel my sadness. Today I give myself permission to feel my frustration. Today I give myself to feel to, to okay to feel my disappointment, my anger, my anxiety. Thank you. My hurt, my frustration, my pain, my struggles, all my mixed emotions. Today, I give myself permission not to engage with people who are closed-minded or those who are seeking to understand or value others' opinions or feelings, my feelings. It's powerful to hear you all say this to me or to say this in chat. And I won't go through all of these, but I wanna, I wanna just read these out and I want you to think about how you'd answer these. I will not allow anyone to tell me my feelings or experiences of blank are not real. I will give myself permission to grieve by blank. I give myself permission to protest, resist, and fight back by blank whatever that is. I give myself permission not to engage with, and I would ask you, you know, again, to, to take this, to think about this, to write this down, to maybe um, think about working with a client with this, because I think it's really helpful for people to really be able to express their honesty, their ability to set boundaries, their ability to, to make some changes. So I'm going to end with this last one. And I want you to write this in chat. I give myself permission to honor my body, my spirit, and its needs by blank. And I want you to put that in chat. I give myself permission to honor my body, my spirit, and its needs by blank. I give myself permission to honor my body, my spirit, by setting boundaries, by speaking up, by setting boundaries. I give myself permission to honor my body by setting boundaries, by taking a break. I give myself permission to honor my body and my spirit by doing what feels good, by being authentic. I give myself permission to honor my body and my spirit by Lastly, I want to talk about supporting each other. What happens sometimes is we say to calm down, don't be so sensitive. You hear those, I'm sure, to yourselves a lot of times. Here's, here's other ways. It's frustrating and it's difficult. I hear you. How can I help you? What else do you need that we can address in this moment? I understand how you can feel that way. I want you, I'm going to end this now, but I want anyone to write in chat uh, a bit about uh, anything that they 
feel about this particular moment. If somebody wants to unmute themselves and say anything, we're about ready to end this. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about what else is um, available for you from the uh, AC Care Connect Skills Development Unit. This is ways in which you can access their information. Here are some upcoming trainings. There's gonna be one on cultural humility and COVID-19 on June 30th. There's some here in July on group facilitation, mental health and self-care, another group facilitation, and empathy effect, encountering bias to improve health outcomes. So a number of really great uh, opportunities to uh, get more support and to learn more. And for anyone who would um, want to unmute themselves, say anything to the group, to, uh, to me, to this topic, you're up. Unmute and let us know. I'm glad that Hold on. sorry everybody. It's okay. I'm glad that I got to talk to every uh, other people going through the same situation. Mm -hmm. And I'm not the only one. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt supported even though we didn't uh, solve any problems, but I still felt that it was a very supportive environment. Okay. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. Sometimes it's hard because yeah. the problem, the support is needed to, to solve the problem. So thank you for that. Anyone else who wants to say anything about this experience before we um, end? It's welcomed. Well, I just want to say thank you for bringing this training to us. I, I think it was like a refresher. Um, I've been kind of feeling a little unmotivated. So this was kind of like a, um, a, like I said, a refresher and connecting with others and realizing that I'm not the only one that's 2020 is just, you know, the chaos left and right. <laughs> so yeah, you. you're welcome. I think it's important to connect with other people. So that's good to hear. Anyone else who want to say something? I really think I really enjoyed having um, this this particular Zoom. It seemed like everything worked really, really well, and I've been on a bunch of them lately. And this, uh, you all have it put together really well, and uh, I enjoyed the the framework of how you use some of the language. It was kind of presented differently, so that was good for me. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. And I'm glad the, the, the production worked too, because that, that can make things hard to do. So thank you. It's good to hear all of, all of your comments. Anyone else? Maybe a couple more comments and then we'll, we'll um, end. Anything else? If not, I wish you all the best, I really do. And I, I hope to see you uh, at another one of the trainings. I'm gonna be doing the one on cultural humility and COVID-19 and the group facilitation, but all of them are really great. So I'm glad that you have these um, opportunities for these trainings to get support. And, and I just wish you the best uh, in working uh, with your communities and really the best for you personally. So thank you all for being here and I wish you all well. Thank you. You Thank too. You. Be safe. You too. Thanks, Tim. Awesome job. That's great. Thank you so much, Tim. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, I'm gonna close out the room. Goodbye, everyone. Have a great rest of your week. Bye.